Hello everyone, and welcome to another Clash of Clans video. Today we are checking out a couple of wars from Patriot UA, which is a Ukrainian clan that I was invited into to check out a couple of their wars. First one here is MCES. We're going to do two videos on these wars, uh, on this war, and uh, it's going to be one on uh, a couple of their strategies, and another one on a deep dive on one of the strategies I'm going to show. Uh, later on in the video. The second one is this one right here, Wasmatic Gaming. So I'm going to do one video on it about one of their strategies as well as look at some Patriot UA attacks as well because they were so nice in inviting me to check out these wars. So uh, let's get started. Start with number five. So this is Synthi of MCES. He's well known in Legend League for his mass hog rider attack, just like me. And here he's still doing it at Tunnel 13, which is very, very interesting. With the introduction of the scatter shots, makes this base or makes this attack a lot harder to do. But he's found a couple of ways to do it. And here is it, here is one of those ways right now. So we lured the CC and took out one scatter shot with the Yeti Blimp. That is pretty good value for a Yeti Blimp. And now he's going to drop the heroes in order to take down the enemy heroes at the bottom of the base. So just like a teaser style or a ring style base in Legend League, the heroes are on the outside in this particular base. So it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to suey for them. So he's just going to drop the Ice Golem and the heroes. And they're going to take care of take care of the CC. So he's left over with three heal spells and a ray spell. And since the Yeti Blimp also created a nice pathway for the Hog Riders, he didn't need to rely on the heroes making that pathway either. So uh, these, uh, these hogs are still going to path uh, clockwise around the base with the help of that CC being a non-targeting our non-defense building. Heroes, uh, the hogs are going to path around it, and they're going to create one nice little pack, and they're just going to take over the space. So the nice warden ability catches every hog, and with the rage spell also, it accelerates the hogs. So then the warden spell, the warden aura, the warden ability is even more powerful. So there we go, Synthi taking out the rest of the base. Uh, he's going to have around like 10 hogs left over. And that is quite the attack, quite the creativity. So next up, we're going to take a look at Arium's attack. He's one of the few remaining members of MCES. Um, they went out and recruited quite a... Uh, quite a list of Vietnamese players from the Vietnamese community, as we'll see later on in the video. But for now, we have Arium here doing a Queen Charge Hog Rider attack using a Wall Wrecker. So that's a very rare, very rare siege barrack to, or siege machine to use at Tunnel 13. But there's a very specific use for it that makes it very valuable in this case. So he does take down the wall, and that saves a free spell. As well as a free spell actually might not even be enough, because he would have to attack the... because the scattershot could also take down the wall breakers too. So eliminates a little bit of risk there. And he has three ice golems in the CC, so that's going to save rage spells for the queen as well. So he's only had to use one so far. Here's the second one. And without any without any CC Ice Golems, you might have to use three Rages or even free spells just for the Queen, uh, just to take on these Expos. So he's going to get the Eagle, uh, one Scattershot, and an Inferno Tower. Let's see if he goes on and takes on the Town Hall as well. I think he does. But he might wait, or might not wait. Yeah, he doesn't wait for the for the queen to take down the town hall because it's about a minute in a little bit more than that 
and he still hasn't taken down the town hall. So the queen's just going to work around the base, or work around the inside of the base, while the hogs take down the town hall, and work their way counterclockwise around the base. The queen took out a ridiculous portion of the base. Absolutely stunning. It took down basically a really important half of the base, with the help of the wall wrecker and the ice golems. So that's part of what makes it, uh, part of what make it, makes it valuable in certain scenarios. So now I'm left with no hog riders, because he uses so many spells for the, uh, so many spells for the queen charge. But he does have a free spell, two free spells for the royal champion, and his royal champion is just going to clean up the rest of the base on her own. But the rest of the defense is on our own. With the help of a couple of wizards on the outside, take care of some trash buildings. And that is going to end up in a three star. So, there's two ways to use hog riders that we don't normally see as much, but it's good to see that they are still useful in their own ways. So, let's take a look at an attack by MacLink. This is a somewhat common. Uh, legendly base. Uh, probably a Chinese design. So he's going to Yeti Bomb the Inferno Tower, and that's going to set up a nice pathing path for the Queen to uh, honor Queen Charge, as well as take down the, or um, uh, deploy the CC as well, or lure the CC. Baby Dragon's going to help with the couple of damage, or the damage output, but doesn't survive long against the Archer Tower. And this is a hybrid attack, so 15 Miners and 10 Hog Riders. And he has a bunch of Wall Breakers, so he's probably going to break into this wall with the, with the Wizard Tower, and then with the Warden or the Expo in the middle of the base. So he's probably going to open up two sets of walls. There's the first set. You could just bring eight wall breakers because he's banking on nobody uh because he's banking on no ground traps. And if there is then he has a couple of extra. But there he goes with the rest of the wall breakers. And they're gonna get Two and three. Layer two and three. Queen takes on the enemy queen. That's pretty lucky because she could have very easily targeted onto the town hall and then added a couple of the extra damage for a second on his uh, friendly queen. But that's not the case here. So hybrid from 12 o'clock while the queen still works on the enemy king. Might use a free spell on that or just the ability. Instead, he uses the free spells on the scatter shots, so that's pretty important. That if you don't need any free spells for your queen charge, then you can use those on the scatter shots, and that's quite valuable as well. Scatter shots are <laughs> they are really damaging. So then that just takes down the entire base. Uh, Queen just got, well, we got the Inferno Tower with the Blimp. Then Queen got just two heroes, the CC and the Town Hall. So, because of the pathing, because how the pathing through the base was really good, um, we didn't even need to get any scatter shots with the Queen Charge. They were just able to power through. So that is it for attack number three. And the final one for this video, take a look at Wong with a really nice, clean Yeti Smash. So we're going to start with the blimp. But a couple of loons for tanking, so that'll tank a couple of shots from the air defense. And then the blimp's going to survive just a little bit longer, but he pops it, or pops it anyway. The Yeti Mites are going to be able to take down all four of those defenses, as well as get 
a couple of the extra ones that he didn't really need to get, but good to have. Lures the CC, which is two ice golems and a couple of archers, and starts his funnel at 12 o'clock with some witches and a bowler. Yetis are down for a couple of bits of tanking. And now the entire army is dropping from the left side. So he's created a really nice path through the base, you can see. He's taking out the left side entirely, which is left with a three building or four building wide gap through the middle of the base. And there's actually no like outside areas with like, there's no like island areas. So he's able to get through the entire base uh, without any problems. So there's not like extra compartments outside of the main core of the base. It's just one big core with a couple of walls in between. So that's why the Yeti Smash on this particular base was really good. And so... It's pretty clean. It's really well set up. So usually these attacks are pretty spammy and kind of lucky. But this is really well sped up, well set up, so I wanted to show a case of Aurea. And show like how to actually do a Yeti Smash and not be terribly uh terribly spammy about it. So yeah, that'll be it for part one. Part two is soon to come. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I've been Raised Gaming and I'm out.